Hi and welcome to the University of Leicester. My name is Felicity and I work in the international office and I'm here to tell you a little bit about the university and also about what to expect when you arrive here. Okay, so first of all, the university profile. So the university was founded in 1921 and granted its Royal Charter in 1957. There are over 13,000 full-time campus-based students and there are about 8,000 distance learning students. So they're all studying from home whilst doing a job or looking after a family, that sort of thing. And they're based all around the world. We're a research intensive university, but we also pride ourselves in excellence in teaching. Um, but it means that you're getting taught by world-class researchers and also get being taught very well. So the student learning experience. Uh, we're a very friendly university. Because there are only about 13,000 students on campus, it's very close, very friendly. It's very easy to meet people. Um, also, very approachable staff. You get to know the staff much better because there are fewer students and a smaller number of staff. So being a relatively small university is an advantage in that way. We're also on a very self-contained campus, so everything's really close by. It's really easy to meet up with your friends and not so far to walk to all your lectures. It's also excellent student support that we provide. So you've got the Student Support and Development Service, um, help for dyslexic students and disabled students. Uh, there's a health centre on campus. There's um, counselling and also career planning. So if you want to think about your future career, at any point during your academic studies here, you can go and speak to our career service and they can help you out. So our achievements, um, the university is ranked in the top 1% of the world universities by the Times Higher Education rankings and in the top 2% by the QS rankings. We're also um, in the top 100 of the world's most international universities and we were also awarded the Queen's Anniversary Prize. So uh, the university is doing very well. So student life. This is always an interesting one. There are over 30 sports teams in the university, so there are lots of sports that you can get involved in. These range from more normal sports like football, right through to things like Quidditch, which if any of you have ever read Harry Potter, you'll know what that is. Um, there are also over 100 soci societies in the university. These range from things like uh, music appreciation through to walking or the International Student Society, for example. The Students' Union also has its own newspaper, radio station and TV station. So if you're interested in editing or anything like that, you can join them. There's also an active social life in the halls of residence. So you can join in with um, activities in the evenings and weekends that help you meet, meet lots of people and make new friends. And there's also local student discounts, so you can get um, money off like 10%, 20%, sometimes even 50% off um, food, clothes, shoes, things like that. So it's important, make sure you've got your student card with you. There are also student committees all around the university that you can get involved in if you're interested in student politics. Um, and there are also performances event and events going on all over the university, especially at the O2 Academy, which is in the basement of the Students' Union. So make sure you check out what sort of events are on hand there. There are also great Students' Union facilities, so the Students' Union itself has things like a Starbucks, restaurants, cafes, and also that's where our student welfare service is based, so they can help you out if you ever have any issues. Okay, so this is where you'll be spending a lot of your time, which is the, li well I hope you will anyway, is the library. The David Wilson Library is open 24 hours a day, five days a week, so during the week time, and during exam time it's actually open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if you're the sort of person that likes to work late into the night, you'll easily find time to work in the library. It's got a cafe, um, lockers that you can store your valuables in if you want to, um, there's a bookshop shop that you can enjoy. There's also a lot of private study areas, quiet areas, group study areas and also a lot of our physical books are also available in online digital format so if you can't get to the library you can always access them from your laptop in your halls of residence or in your accommodation. Now university accommodation, this is an important bit. So prices start from around £79 per week. 
All students who firmly accept their offers are guaranteed a room in a university accommodation provided they meet the deadline, which is the 1st of September. But if you don't meet the deadline, we do try our hardest to find you accommodation because we know that it's very important to you. There are a, a few different places that you can live, which is either the Oadby Student Village or City Living, which is much closer to campus. And also to bear in mind that you, the internet and utility bills are actually included in your costs. So it actually works out much cheaper to live in university accommodation than in private accommodation. So firstly, the, uni the Oadby Student Village. This is predominantly for undergraduates. There is catered and self-catered accommodation, so if you prefer to have your meals cooked for you, you can go for the catered option. If you are happy cooking for yourself, then you can go for the self-catered option. There are lots of sports facilities up there. There are football pitches, rugby pitches, badminton courts, tennis courts. Whatever sport you enjoy, there are areas that you can go to. There are also, there's also a gym and a swimming pool there. There's also the Botanic Gardens, which are right next to the halls of residence in the Oadby Student Village, and it's a beautiful place to go and sit and read in the summertime when the, the weather's very nice. There are also lots of social activities going on at the halls of residence, and also there's often intramural sports, so, um, which is games played between the halls of residence where you compete um, for the title of the best hall. These are some of the halls of residence you can stay in. So there's John Foster, Gilbert Murray and Stanford, Beaumont and Digby Halls. And they're all very beautiful places to live and all re really easy to get to by either cycling or bus. Or if you like a long walk, you can walk to campus as well. Now, city living, um, most of it is less than half a kilometre from the campus. Um, it's all self-catered. It's very close to most of, where, uh, of your classes, so you can easily walk to class. It's also close to the city centre as well, so if you need to get to the city, you probably walk it in 15 minutes or just jump on the bus and it'll get you there even quicker. Um, there are also longer contracts, so these um, halls of residence are more suitable for uh, postgraduates. And some of the examples of the places that you could live are Freeman's Common, Nick, Mary G, Nixon Court and Opal Court. So the pictures that you can see in the slide are at the top Opal Court and at the bottom Nixon Court. So um, what is provided? This is important obviously because you'll be needing to pack your bags to come here. So in the room you'll have a bed, a wardrobe, a desk and chair. Um, an easy chair for reading and some bookshelves to put your books on. Um, not provided is bedding, sheets, duvets and covers, things like that, and pillows, crockery and cutlery, cooking utensils, um, towel and a desk lamp. Now you probably don't need to pack this in your luggage, um, but if you want to order it in advance, you can do so on our accommodation website by booking, say, a bedding pack or a kitchen pack, and they'll be there ready for you when you arrive. You'll also have use of in the uh, shared kitchen of a cooker, a fridge freezer, kettle, microwave, toaster, iron, ironing board and a downstairs laundress as well so that you can wash your clothes. Now the campus location. So um, we're based in the very heart of England. We're um, about 160 kilometres from London but this takes just 63 minutes by train. Um, and the nearest airports are East Midlands, Birmingham and um, also you have got Heathrow, although that's a little further away. City life. So as you guess, we are a campus based university, but we're very near to the city centre. So Leicester City is a big part of Leicester University life. So the campus is a short walk from the city centre. The population of Leicester is about 300,000, so it's quite small in comparison to a lot of cities. Um, but it's a very diverse, multicultural city and it's very vibrant. About 12% of the city's population during term time are students, so it's a very young population, lots of students, lots of um, things to do and see. Um, the city centre is also um, very easy to get to, so you can go uh, do shopping, go to restaurants, there are cinemas, museums, there's music, also sports and entertainment venues. You know, know that Leicester City Football Club, um, their grounds are based very near to the, the campus, and also the Leicester Tigers Rugby Club is also very nearby, so you can go and watch a rugby, uh, rugby team play if you want to. 
Next, you'll want to be thinking about travelling to the UK. Now, this is obviously very important because you have to get here to study. So there are non-stop flights to, from most major cities to London Heathrow Airport. Um, the uh, airlines would usually be either your main country airline um, or something like British Airways. You can also get flights um, from a lot of major cities and some smaller cities to Birmingham um, Airport, but you'd have to go via uh, one of the European cities. So this would be, for example, um, Amsterdam flying with KLM, uh, Munich flying with Lufthansa or Paris flying with Air France. Now, once you get here, you'll need to travel from the airport to Leicester. Now, uh, there are a few options that you can take. You can take the National Express coach. Um, that's, you can get this directly from Heathrow or from Birmingham. It's better to book in advance so that you know um, that there's space. And also, please check the luggage allowance because sometimes they can be quite strict and you need to make sure that all your bags will get on. The easiest way to get from Birmingham is actually by train. So when you arrive at the airport, you can get the train to Birmingham New Street Station and then to Leicester, which in total takes between 70 and 90 minutes, depending on the day of the week. Another easy option is to pre-book a taxi. Now, um, I have to say here, make sure you pre-book because taxis that wait outside the airports often charge a lot of money. So if you pre-book a taxi, then they'll usually collect you from the arrivals area, take you to the car and then drop you off directly at your um, accommodation, which is a very easy way to do it. And if you and, and are coming with friends, you can often share the cost of the taxi, which can make it a bit cheaper. Uh, there's more information on our website, so you can go to um, le.ac.uk forward slash international and find out more information about getting to Leicester. So some of you may need to come on a pre-sessional program. Um, this is something we do offer, so English courses before you start your main course. Um, we have course D, which is a 10-week course starting in July and finishing in September, giving you a bit of time to relax before you start your main course. Uh, then there's course E, which is um, typically between five and six weeks and starts in August and finishes in September. And then we also have a study skills course. Now, this is for students who are already unconditional on their course, but feel they just need that little bit extra training just to get them up to the academic standards of English. And this is run uh, towards the end of September. Now, visa applications, obviously this is very important. Um, so once you've accepted your unconditional offer with us, um, you'll be sent a CAS request form. You'll need to fill this out and with uh, putting all your details in, making sure everything's correct, send it back to us and then as soon as we receive it, we'll then request your CAS number. So once you've got your CAS number, then you can get together all your documents, make sure everything's together and you'll be able to apply for your visa. The CAS number is only valid for six months, so make sure you remember that. And you can't make your application until three months before the start date of your course. So you'll have a very short window in which to do this, so make sure that you're as organised as possible. Once you're granted the visa, it will be specifically for the University of Leicester, so you won't be able to use it for any other university in the UK. So make sure you're definitely sure that you want to study at the University of Leicester before applying. Now, support for international students. We try to provide as much support as possible. So we have specialist international um, student advisors. Um, they can give advice on visas, finance, working in the UK, things like that. So there's a website on the slide that you can have, have a look at just to make sure that it's, there's going to be plenty of help for you. There's also the International Students Association who organise lots of trips around the UK and also provide support for international students. There's the, obviously the pre Sessional courses that I've already spoken about and then there's also free in-sessional English courses so if you're struggling at any time with your English you can join one of the, uh, the in-sessional courses and they'll be able to help you. Healthcare. Now this is a very important issue because obviously we want to make sure that all our students are as healthy as possible. Um, so when you arrive in the university, you will need to register with the university's health centre, which is on campus, and 
once you've registered, you should be able to access healthcare whilst you're here as easily as possible. Um, now, the NHS is free to most the majority of students who are studying for more uh, a course for more than six months. And um, on top of that, there are some charges payable for things like prescriptions and dental work, um, but the majority of treatment is free. If you Google um, UKCISA, keeping healthy, you'll find lots of information on how to keep healthy in the UK and what, what's available to you. Right, financial matters. Um, so when you come to the UK, you'll probably want to open a bank account. We have a Santander bank on campus, so it's nice and easy to access, really easy to um, open the account and also to do anything that you need to whilst you're here. And also there are lots of other different banks in the city centre, such as HSBC and Barclays. You might want to speak to your, your own bank in your home country and see if they have any links with any banks in the UK, because this might make it easier to set one up. Also then you can pay, um, you'll need to pay your fees by electronic transfer before you arrive. So this will be before you open up a UK bank account. So you need to make sure that you're able to transfer fees from your home bank to the university. And I'd advise doing this at least two weeks before you plan to register because it can take some time for us to attribute your money to your student number. Okay, and this, is also important to make sure that you have enough money for the first few weeks because obviously you might not be able to use your um, home bank card in the UK um, and also it can take some time to open a bank account in the UK because you'll need to have registered first so that you can get a bank letter. So make sure you've got some money, um, either so sort of traveler's checks or a, a credit card that will work in the UK. Probably not American Express as a lot of UK um, shops don't take American Express. So make sure you've got something like Visa or MasterCard that you can use whilst you're here to make sure you're able to pay for things until you've opened your bank account. The International Welcome Week. Okay, so this is the fun bit. When you arrive, we try to make it as fun as possible so that you can meet plenty of other students and learn all about the campus and the city. So it's usually the week before the beginning of term. So um, this year it'll be the so week of the 17th of September. Um, we offer city and campus tours so you can get to know your campus, get to know the city. There'll also be presentations on health, immigration, finance, English support, things like that. There's also a social events programme so you, to try and help you get to know new, new people because uh, obviously you've come to a new country, you don't know many people so this is a way of you making friends and getting to know everyone. Um, there's accommodation available during this week and we try where possible to give you your term time accommodation so you don't have to move rooms and bookings will be available um, in July and August so you can make sure that you book on and book onto the talks as well and onto the social activities so that you can get involved. So if you have any questions then you can ask us during the question and answer session online so just type any questions you have and one of our advisors will be there to help you. So thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy your time at Leicester.